always a fun thing. Um, but as I was saying, this is Leslie Hassler, your host on the Double Your Business Show. We are live every Monday afternoon at 1.30 Central on Blab. Um, you can also catch the rebroadcasting of the audio on iTunes or the rebroadcasting of the video on YouTube or YouTube or our website, yourbizrules.com. But I am a business coach. I primarily I primarily work with women, although I have had some very smart men clients. Um, and what really I would say is the commonality is all my clients want more than just to be a business owner. They actually want to have a family life <laughs> and uh, the rewards of business, uh, not just being able to say they're a business owner. So whether that means that they have more time to do both, work and family if they have more profit in their banks um, or they're just able to feel that success that maybe outwardly they look like they have but uh, maybe inwardly are, are working a little bit on so that's kind of a bit of what I do and what we're trying to do with the double your business show is really help you grow your business in the most simplistic ways so we have a full calendar uh, for the year and we've been having a lot of fun and today I wanted to talk about recession proofing and Amy knows because she can she sees everything all right for our community as well but you know I've been a bit introspective here um, in Dallas as you know we've had our own um, protests and interesting things going on, not interesting always in a good way, but um, have had several injuries and deaths and things related to um, social injustice. I'm going to say, I'm like, the reason behind things isn't, isn't um, wrong. It's how things are being executed that I think is, is really where we're held in question. But I have had, um, you know, even just looking at this year, and when we look at the turmoil between our political elections, when we look at the turmoil between public and um, our police, when we look at turmoil, you name it, it really has me pondering. I won't say questioning. I'm not paranoid about it, but it does have me pondering, right? And I look at a couple of things is we are about eight years outside of a recession. And if you look at most financial models, we are due for a course correction, right? That typically happens eight to 10 years um, in an eight to 10 year cycle, if I've got my numbers correct. So it's t kind of one of these things to where as a business owner, you don't need to be paranoid but you need to be prepared. And I think I come at it just a little bit different because my first business, I actually started in 2007 when times were good and times were really good. And it felt like times were going to be great for a long time. I don't know if you remember this, but I, I remember being a bit in awe when I was in business in 2007 about what was going on. And Facebook can see that I play with things all the time. So I'll move that over there. Um, <laughs> I have to have some, I'm kinetic. I have to have something in my hands. But as you can see, you know, 2007, we did really well. If you know my story, 2008, it is as if somebody turned off the lights um, at the breaker and I could not find the breaker box to turn them back on. And what I learned going through that first recession is um, nobody really ever expects the recession. Nobody ever really expects financial corrections in a market. Uh, you get into the situation of being content maybe or being um, rose colored glasses. I don't know. You just don't think it's going to end tomorrow. And I think in, in 2008, when I remember my business come to a screeching halt, that's exactly what it felt like. It felt like somebody turned off a switch. It didn't feel gradual. Now, if you if I had been paying attention, I would have seen more indicators or if I had um, done a few other things, maybe I would have been better prepared. So I, I, I'm bringing this topic to you today in an effort to help you be better prepared. Or when you start to see an economic downturn and you're looking for information, you're going to find this piece of information to help you out. So a couple of things that I have, I'll know about business and know about recessions. You can have a, a mechanically bad business, like maybe a business that it has a negative cash flow, maybe a business that isn't as profitable as it should be, maybe a business that is just um, has some things that need to be corrected, but because there's so much volume of business, you don't see them or you downplay the problems or you're just not you're too busy. I hate those words. You're too busy. <laughs> Well, 
to what is happening in the world. What was that, Amy? Your sound, at least for me, was very jarble, garbled there for oh. a few minutes. So oh. I'm, hoping, I'm hoping it was just me and not, not everybody, but. Okay, I'm hoping it's, it's just internet connection and sound. But basically what I hope to help people do, and one of the things that I try to do in the business is help people have good business and good times so that when the bad times come, because they do, Let's just be, you know, there's every up and every down. It's a cycle. When they come, you're better prepared. You can sustain yourself. You can have the cash flow that you need. You can know what course corrections you need to make based upon that. So we're going to talk about some of those course corrections. We're going to talk about some of the ways to um, be prepared, you know, not to be caught off guard because that's really one of the most important things you can do as a business owner in your business. So I want to to do that. Um, I know we've got a few people. I see Shailene watching us on Facebook. So howdy, Shailene. I, you've been in my thoughts. So um, you can expect a phone call from me because I've got, I've got an idea for you. Uh, and I know we've got a couple of other people watching us on Facebook and as well on, um, on Blab. Amy, do we have a big... Do we have anybody to do some shout outs to? I know I can see some eyeballs, but I don't see anybody in our chat room. We don't have anyone in the chat room right now, no. Okay. All right. So if you're watching us, feel free to head over to Blab and join in because I'll be taking questions at the end. Otherwise, you just get to hear what I have to say. My, That's why it's my show, right? We can do that. <laughs> So um, the first part I want to talk about is really uh, if we're going to recession proof our business, we've got to be prepared financially and the financial aspects. You know, we just had um, Justin Crane on a couple of weeks ago uh, who talked or maybe a month ago that talked to us about cash flow and things of that nature where he would talked about what we he felt like people needed in their business. You'll have to forgive me. I forgot to turn off the phone. How horrible is that, right? One, two, three, we'll just turn it down. Okay, that's somebody that says they need to talk to me right now. But, <laughs> <laughs> oh well, it's live. This is what happens when it comes live. But we're talking about recession-proofing your business and really from a financial standpoint what that means. Now, when Justin was on here a couple weeks ago, he shared that he loves for his clients to have three months in the bank. I love for my clients have six months in the bank. <laughs> and it might be that protectionary device of having gone through that first recession and knowing a few things. Here's what three to six months does for you. Anytime you make that course correction, it's going to take a good 90 days for it to settle in or for you to see the impact. If you see um, the results from a change any quicker, that just means you probably have a vibrant business and have a lot of traction and momentum going. But for most small businesses, you need the 90 days. You might need six months. Having a cash cushion of three to six months in your bank account means that when you need to correct, you can take that course correction. I've shared with you um, a couple times on here an example of, you know, a uh, year and a half ago, we I was having phone calls all the time, lots of people calling, nobody being able to afford my services. Now, you could get upset by that, you know, and I saw it as a sign that I needed to course correct. I needed to shift something that I was saying so that I was attracting people who could afford my services. Not that I didn't want to help, and I still do. That's why we do things like the Blab Show. That's why we do, you know, blog articles and, and virtually give things away all day long. But from a business standpoint, the people I need to work with in order for me to be profitable, I wasn't attracting those people. So I had to shift. When I shifted that marketing message, the phone stopped ringing. Deafening silence. Okay. I don't need a whole lot of phone calls, but anybody that has their phone stop ringing, it's not a comfortable place to be. And you have to allow what that new new thing that you've implemented to take impact. So I did have a very three month <laughs> dry spell in my business because I made the shift. It was a shift I needed to make, 
But had I not known to expect it, had I not known to ride the wave, had I not been able to financially ride the wave, I would have freaked out and made some probably bad decisions because I'm human. Okay, so that's what this three to six month in the bank is about. It's about providing a safety net for yourself and for your business to give yourself the freedom to make shifts so that you can improve your business, improve your clientele, whatever it is. Um, one of my mentors, uh, Stella Orange, who was on here I mean, not even a month ago. Everybody seems to be on here a month ago. But, you know, she just recently got married. You know what she's doing? She's taking a month off of her business to enjoy newly being newly married because she has things like this in place in her business. And she shares this, so I'm not um, oversharing for her. I'm just giving you an example of what this means. So even in good times, this is a freedom giver. <laughs> this is a freedom maker in your business and for yourself, okay? You never know what's going to happen. We are small businesses, and a lot of times our businesses are wrapped up with us. And so if we had to take a month off to care for um, a parent who was ill, would you be able to do it? Or would you be stressed? Or would you lose your business? I've talked to so many people that have had to restart businesses after dealing with family illnesses. So take this into impact when you're looking to recession-proof your business is you need that financial cushion. Just as you would have that financial cushion, um, personal finances, you need the same thing in business. And like I said, three to six months is where I'd really like you to do. Um, you need to evaluate your expenditures. We had, I shared this on, on the show notes page on the website, and I think it's live today. So if you go out there, you'll find it. But I had a gentleman, Kevin, on Kevin McNeil, good uh, partner to some, a very good buddy who I need to hook up with and, and go hang out with some more. But he was talking about why most entrepreneurs miss out on profits. And he had a really interesting way of looking at where the money goes into your business. And probably the one of the things that just kind of stuck with me is when you're evaluating your ex expenditures, when times are good, you're probably more likely to give yourself little perks. I mean, and you should, honestly, you should. But you also need to evaluate what those perks are and if you're looking to do that three to six months, maybe you cut back on perks to fill the three to six months bracket. But another kind of sneaky place, sneaky, sneaky place where money leaks out of your business. You know, you've got money coming in, you've got money leaking out, and you've got to make sure that they're both <laughs> in proportion. But subscriptions. Now, here's the thing. I love the subscription model, especially as an income producer. And part of the reason that I love prescription models is because it provides ongoing revenue. And why does it provide ongoing revenue? Because people sometimes forget to turn it off, even if they're not using it. And that's kind of the way it benefits your business. But on the flip side, you're human. You probably have some subscriptions that you're paying for that you don't really need. And they add up. All right? <laughs> Amy's like, yes. <laughs> Amy's sitting here. I can read Amy's lips. She's got her, her microphone on, on mute, but I can read her lips as, as she's kind of going in there. So you're looking for really just being efficient in your business and how where the expenses are going so that you're using your money wisely. You don't have the three to six month. Trim some perks. Trim some of these subscriptions. You've got your three to six month perk yourself out, you know, within reason, you know, <laughs> prepare, be prepared in your business. But you see what I say? Sometimes we give ourselves perks before we have the safety net. And I'd rather see you have the safety net, especially um, if we were to head into a recession or suddenly you had a market shift or you had um, a major supplier go out of business. I mean, there's lots of ways that these things can be used to protect your business, even if there isn't a recession. Um, so we want to, get some efficiencies, maximize profit on that. So there's, there's this concept called just-in-time ordering. Do you know, have you ever heard of that, Amy, just-in-time? Yes. Okay. So yes. basically, the king of just-in-time is Walmart. Walmart I'm yes. just going to let you. Walmart's the king. Yeah. Right. And they, I don't know if they pioneered this, but this is, I've always heard it from coming from them um, and then other people adopting the model. But this just-in-time model was really meant to shift the ownership of inventory. So it shifted it out of Walmart and shifted it back to the manufacturer. 
so that Walmart did not have all of this high inventory and therefore potentially high liability sitting on their product shelves. Now, when 2008 came and it came around and we dealt with that recession, a lot of people were stuck with a lot of inventory. You need inventory to fuel the business. I don't want you to slow down the sales. I want you to manage your inventory if that's something that you do. I know in the design business, the one thing we didn't want was inventory. Even if we had to order two in order to get one for a client, you know, and that happens, we found another way to get rid of that inventory because that was money tied up in something we did not need to have ownership of, especially in our situation when we're customized products different situation when it comes to uh, showrooms and if you if you have an Etsy account or Shopify and you sell that or you sell resell through eBay or anything of those natures. As a small business, you need to minimize your inventory holdings because it maximizes your ability to free cash. Okay, so you have cash for other things. Um, the last one that I'm going to say in the in the financials and is about cash flow monitoring. You know what? Nobody loves to monitor their cash flow. Nobody. Nobody. I, I have yet to have a client who goes, oh, Leslie, yes, I would love to do a cash flow report. It's necessary. Period. I have one um, right now. I will let you know. I use a third-party software called Pocketsmith. And what I love about Pocketsmith is it's small enough I mean, it's small and flexible for my size business. I don't have a massive business. I don't have massive expenditures. I can pretty much guarantee what I'm going to spend every month. And so it's flexible enough that I can plan it all on a calendar. I put in all my client deposits. If I get a new deposit, it goes on the calendar and it maps things out for me. For the next year, two years, I think, or even maybe three, I could see what my cash flow looks like and I can see far enough out to make decisions and Amy will know <laughs> she will be like we need to buy this and I'm like hope oh, I gotta go check the cash flow like I don't spend anything without checking my cash flow report because I've gotten bitten in the past of not of thinking I had money and then finding out I didn't have money or thinking this one bill came in and but it didn't come in and then I wound up upside down on something that I didn't want to be upside down on or I couldn't purchase something I wanted to purchase when I wanted to purchase it. So cash flow reports are really key. And I liken it to this. A cash flow report is kind of like a, a map. Pretend you don't have Google Maps anymore that can't give you directions. I'm talking an old school map. And uh, I tell you what, when we were in uh, Hurricane Rita um, many moons ago, so 2005 maybe, uh, that little paper map <laughs> saved our butts when electronics went out and you couldn't get Google Maps, okay? So if you think about this, you're on, as a business, you're, you're on a freeway, you are driving 55 miles an hour, you know, you're going and blowing. Not having a cash flow map is like covering your eyes and hoping you don't hit somebody or something. I don't know about you, but I always pull right. <laughs> it would just be a matter of time before I hit a car or a guardrail if I didn't have my eyes open. A cash flow report gives you the ability to see what's going to happen in the future. And guess what? If you see a month that you run into the red and it's three months out, you can change it. Ah, you have time. Amazing. Amy's laughing at me still. <laughs> I must be into being really funny today. Um, but when you don't have that tool, you're always caught off. You're always caught off guard. You're always caught off by surprises. And those aren't fun. Nobody enjoys not knowing what it is. So you might have a personal budget. I'm talking about a cash flow report that looks at things on a daily basis. That's why I love Pocketsmith because I can see things on a daily basis and it just makes me feel good. So if I'm going to do an expenditure, I actually go out three months and see what spending the money here because I have it, right? See what the money here does to me in three months. And if I'm still good in three months, I'm probably a yes. If I'm not, I might be, a, I need to wait, I need to see, or I need to bring in some more cash to be able to allow me to do that. So that is um, a lot of it, but I will let you know that the cash flow from a pipeline perspective too has that little double uh, um, benefit. So we give away the uh, marketing 
quick fix all day long on this show. Uh, if you're interested and you don't have it, you can just hit it up at yourbizrules.com forward slash marketing quick fix. And it's just a, a tool that I use with my clients to really make sure that you're marketing in the right places at the right times for the results that you want. Well, when you're marketing your small business and you're creating your cash flow report and you're creating a pipeline, you're creating longevity in your business. It's not that necessarily a pipeline's guaranteed, but let me tell you, when I have had clients that I've used this tool with who are always worried about not having enough money, not knowing where the next client is, not knowing any of this stuff, and that gets a very frenetic negative energy, having a pipeline to where you can pop up and go, oh, wow, that's right. I forgot about the Joneses. They're coming on next month. Oh, that's right. You know, the Smiths are redoing whatever next, next month. Or you know what? They only come once a quarter and next month is their quarter. It gives you a lot more confidence in your business when you can do one report and see what's coming in. So that's huge. Um, okay, we're, since we're talking about all the ugly, not fun stuff in business, except for maybe if you're a bookkeeper listening or an accountant, um, our bookkeepers and our accountants are going, yes, it's about time somebody said that if I could only get my my business owners to do this. But what we're, <laughs> we might as well jab all the not fun stuff in all at once, I'm just saying. So th the next thing we're gonna talk about is reporting. You have to, excuse me, I have to blow my nose a little bit here. Um, people don't do reporting enough. And there's some things that I look at that are nice to know, like your P&L, your balance statement, where you are from a profitability. You should know those things. But there are other key elements in your business that you need to be tracking monthly, quarterly, no, definitely yearly if you're only going to do yearly. But I'm going to tell you, if you're only doing things yearly, you're missing the boat. You're leaving money on the table. You um, have no one else to blame but yourself if you haven't made your goals. Because the best way to make your goals is to review your numbers. There's this little subconscious tick little subconscious flip of a switch that happens when you are conscious about your numbers. All right. So you, I've talked to you about the seven figures that I feel like you should know in your business in case you've never heard of those. Um, you can look at it on the website, yourbizrules.com, but let me go over them real fast. So it's leads times conversion produces a client. So leads and conversions one and two, three is average sale. Four is number of times purchased. You add up one, two, three, and four, or actually you multiply them, and you'll get revenue, all right? When you have revenue, then you need to know what your profit is, okay? So that's five numbers right there, right? Leads, conversions, average sale, times purchase, and profit. Six is lifetime value of a customer, and seven is, oh golly, how did I miss seven? Amy, what did I miss? Seven, lifetime value of a customer and cost of acquisition. There it is. Sorry. I'll get it. It's Monday. It's summer. <laughs> I found it very hard to focus this summer. So those are your seven numbers. Monitoring those seven numbers are like gold. They show you shifts, right? And when you see, it's kind of like when I talk to my kids about the report card. Am I an A Nazi? No, I'm not an A Nazi. I am, you do the best that you can do. And if the best you can do is a B, then I'm fine with it. If the best you can do is, is an A and you're giving me Cs, I get issues, right? Um, and I know my kids are always, uh, can be a little lazy. And so sometimes I think I'll get by with a C and I'm like, but you're capable of an A. When I look at my kids' report cards, I circle. Uh, I'll circle, we'll have a six weeks and I'll go circle, circle, circle. And I'll look at them and I'll say, look, you've had a decline of three grades and they'll get upset. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, I'm not yelling. I'm just saying we have a decline. Do we want that decline to continue? If you're looking at your business in your seven figures, so seven numbers I just went over with you and I'll have, see if Amy can type them in for us real quick. But if you're looking at your business in these seven figures, okay, and you just check in on it, you can see a decline. You will see a decline before you feel a decline. And that's one way to be a smarter business owner is to notice these things before you start feeling them. Because if you know them, you can do something about them. We're not caught off guard. Again, we're not driving down the freeway blind trying to avoid accidents. We actually can see the accident and get in another lane. 
that's a good. So a uh, couple of shout outs here. We've got lots of fun people here. Amy, Amy joined us on Facebook too. So she's on Facebook and Blab. You want to do some shout outs, Amy? So I've got you talking is. on my phone as well. So you could post your marketing quick fix over there as well. So <laughs> So Amy's got, she was like, I have to turn you down. I'm hearing right. you in echo. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a little bit of delay. So it yeah. Um, so most of our folks today on um, in Blab are joining us in the chat. So we want to go ahead, or not joining us are in the chat or watching, but aren't in the chat room. So we want to invite you to switch over and join us um, via live chat so that you can go ahead and put your questions in here for Leslie. She's doing dual duty here and on Facebook Live, but we'll make sure that you that if you submit your question, that we'll get it answered for you. Yeah, so we actually have a lot of people on Facebook Live here today. Amy was just sharing who is on Blab. We like to do some shout outs. So um, I got lots of my neighborhood peeps here on Facebook, which is kind of fun. So we have Brent and Angie and Tiffany Alexander. Um, uh, well, actually, Tiffany Allen, sorry. You notice when you, you know somebody from their maiden name, for me, it's always hard to switch to their married name. I still call my college roommate by her maiden name, and um, she's been married, I think, 14 years. So, but they Thanks for joining us, guys. We're we're having fun. We're doing dual duty. So if you are just joining us, I do a Blab show every Monday afternoon at 1.30 and uh, called the Double Your Business Show on Blab. And we also uh, rebroadcast on iTunes and a couple of other ways if you'd like that. So we just I just decided I'd have fun because sometimes Blab doesn't work so well or share our message. And I'm double duty. I'm on one screen over there is Blab and on the screen down here is Facebook. So that's why I keep looking back up in front. But we're talking today about recession proofing your business. And um, if you're just joining us, I feel like it's a timely topic, not because I have an all seeing glass or a magic eight ball, but because I'm just watching. I'm just watching and I see that it would be if you're not prepared for um you know, being able to sustain any kind of economic shifts, then now's the time to prepare for it. It's always, you can do it, you can do the preparation in the downturn. Not a problem. It just takes longer. So why not do it while times are good? You've got money to spend. You can, you know, go through your bucket, make sure all the holes are, are full and that you can become recession proof. Because at the end of the day, it's it's not really about the economy. And I'm going to go into this. Okay, what it's about when it comes to being able to be recession proof is actually about being a great entrepreneur and looking at the opportunities. So I've got a question here on Facebook Live. Um, Samira says, do you think business always needs partners? So here's here, I'll answer this question because we're going to talk about adaptability is our, our kind of last bullet point. Do I think that a business has to have two people involved like co-partners or co-founders? No, I don't think necessarily that all businesses do. I think it can work very, very well for some people and it cannot work so well for other people. However, that being said, even if you are you are it, you are the, the founder, the CEO, the head honcho, you sign the checks type of thing in your business, I do think you need partnerships. Okay, it is one of the easiest ways to grow your business. It is one of the fastest paths to cash because you're playing the game of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. And if you've ever played that game, basically it's where you try to join two um, actors in a game within six steps or six movies to Kevin Bacon. Okay. I love that analogy because that's what really you really should be trying to do in your business with partnerships is creating a six degrees to your ideal client. Um, I think too often in uh, networking, what we have is we have people trying to make direct sales, you know, make a sale. You walk into a networking situation, you're trying to sell yourself or sell your business. This is a bad use of your time and other people's times. You're out there to find the right partners who do business um, like you similarly have the same values in a comp uh, complementary but not competitive uh, environment. So that's where I think really businesses uh, need the partners. So great question. So we've got Stephen who just joined us on the blab. So howdy Stephen. We are 
two timing it on Facebook Live and Blab today because I'm crazy like that and evidently didn't have enough to do today. So we're on to adaptability. So we're talking about how to recession proof your business. And I think perhaps, you know, the financial aspect of it is good business. You should have that no matter what. It's how you um, can survive and ride the tides and be able to shift and figure things out and have freedom and choice and not be backed into a corner. Adaptability is a little bit of this nuance of a skill when it comes to recession proofing. So I, I have lots of little bullet points and you know we t we've talked about some of these on the show but I haven't really put them in the context of recession proofing your business. So the first thing you wanna look at is if you were to take your client base today, um, how diverse is your client base? All right, now I worked with a gentleman earlier this year whose client base was oil and gas. Well, we're in Texas. I gotta tell you, a lot of businesses hinge upon oil and gas who have had lots of profits and, and money flowing through, but the, get, the price of gas has tanked and so everybody's freaking out and everybody's pulling back, all right? So if your business is built on that client, you've already felt that. You have felt your projects getting pulled. You have felt funding not coming through as easily, right? When your client base is so heavily weighted in one industry, it's hard for you to be recession proof because if that recession or economic shift affects that industry, then you're affected too. So one of the things, and this is what I was working on with my client, Kevin, is what other industries could you serve? So I don't necessarily want to change you to change the voodoo that you do. I want you to see, could you do a shift and suddenly the financial market could take advantage of what you do. Could you do a shift and suddenly another industry could do what you do? You know, he, in Kevin's example, he was in data, he, you know, in data and not data processing, but actually data mining. Well, data mining's huge. I mean, I just finished reading. I don't have the book in front of me. Oh my gosh, great book, The Power of Habit. And you know what they were talking about? Target. Target and how Target's using data mining and your habits to make more sales. Interesting. Don't th they're not the only one. They're not the only one. So if you look at that and you're like, okay, this is what I do, then you've got to look at who else can it serve. All right. So we're looking to diversify our client base and we're looking to make it so that we're not our business isn't so heavily grounded. We haven't put all of our eggs into one basket. And for this, you know, I, for this, I, I kind of gave the, the oil and gas. So if you've got that, you've got to find other ways to do this. And I'll say the next part is price sensitivity. Um, if you are have a price sensitive market. Let's say maybe you're selling that low ticket item, the widget, the, the who's a what's it or something like that. And that's a very price sensitive market. And then the adaptability would be, how do you tap into a non-price sensitive market? Okay, typically that's gonna be a higher affluent market or it's gonna be somebody um, that will just pay for what they're gonna pay for and may not fit in that high um, affluency. There's, you know, there's a, a book that Dan Kennedy wrote that was talking about marketing to the affluent. And he mentions that there are three things that most people will pay for. And you just need to figure out what those three things are that people will pay for. Those are non-price sensitive areas for somebody that may not be considered highly affluent. All right, so for instance, guys, audio, audio visual, Stereo systems, you know, the Mac Daddy, of all things. That may be the area where you're not price sensitive. But man, oh my, you won't pay more than $25 for an oil change. You see what I mean? There's something like that in your, in your life, and maybe you can identify with that. So we want to make sure that we've got, you know, the opportunities mapped out. So whether it's industry or price sensitivity. Now, here's the really interesting thing. And I saw this with our my first business in 2008. I was technically marketing to high affluency, a non-price sensitive market. However, because the downturn was so significant, so widespread on the evening news, what happened is you get socially conscious spending. So people that had money were not spending because they felt bad 
about not about spending money when so many people had had so many downturns. So you've got to keep these things in kind of a, a shift. And I, I think that's why adaptability is so good. Um, you know, we've got lots of people joining us on Facebook Live. Uh, we're talking about how to recession proof your business. And I'm actually doing dual duty on Blab and ooh, like you can see um, Blab and on Facebook Live. Um, we've talked about the financial ramifications. We've talked about reporting and being aware. And we're really into this adaptability kind of stage of how do you recession proof your business? Business. And so we've talked about really looking at your clientele um, and getting diversification among industry, among pricing, among um, just having that kind of balance. So uh, we use Texas and oil and gas. Lots of people are tied very tightly to oil and gas. So when the oil and gas industry has its natural down cycle, because it has, I, I mean, in my adult life, I can easily remember three or four times people freaking out about the price of oil, right? And three or four times where the price of oil has just gone right back up. So we want to make sure that we have there. But I think that second part is diversification of products. Now, I love saying um, you should have a yes at any price level. So that three-tiered approach to business of having a yes at a DIY level, having a yes at a group level, you know, and I'm kind of speaking a little more coaching and then having that yes at that high end level. Well, you can do the same thing with product. You can do the same thing if you're not in coaching, if you're in, you know, uh, accounting, for instance, you could do the same thing there. But they're preparing to have that multiple price kind of options for your clients to come in is a good recession proof tactic. Because what it does is remember, we were just talking about price sensitivity or industry, um, you know, sensitivity there, it enables the person to move down or it enables a person to move up. If that, if they, you know, if they're not price sensitive, they can go up, but if they are price sensitive, they can go down. There's a little, there's some ways that you can actually use that to your advantage. And in good times, I think we were just talking about this maybe last week when we were talking about sales. It's about maximizing your cost of acquisition, how much money you're spending in marketing. If you are attracting people, and maybe not all of them are your ideal client. Maybe some of them can, are price sensitive and it's a no, or you say, I'm sorry, I can't help you because I don't have anything. It's a lost sale in my, my, my eyes. It's a lost opportunity. And so being good in business means that we maximize our opportunities. So I have to do a shout out for Steven. Steven's telling Twitter all about us. He must be really loving what we're doing today um, over here on Blab. So the next part of this is thinking beyond yourself, if you will. So what, I, and it's this kind of the win-win value. And you can use this in partnerships. You know, Samira asked us a little bit earlier about do I believe partnerships are necessary in business? You, it, this whole concept of looking for the win-win or the win-win-win. So if it's partners, it's you win, they win, and your, the clients win. If it's clients, it's you win, they win kind of a thing. So looking for the win is a great little concept. So it's about adding some value. Sometimes what you're looking to do is concrete a relationship, not just make a sale. All right. And having this forward thinking of if I added value to my client and they did better in business, then they can still afford me. If I'm in a recession and I see that I have access to um, a marketing genius, I have access to a financial genius, I have access in all these ways that it benefits my client but doesn't necessarily benefit my bottom line, but your client can stay in business and they're happy about it, they're excited, they're thankful to you, oh my gosh, you know, Leslie, how, why didn't you tell me about this sooner? I can't believe the difference it's made. OK, you stay top of mind from a business standpoint. I'm going to give you the whole all the angles because that's the way my brain works is I can see all the angles all the time. But when you do that, you're ensuring that they're healthy. If they're healthy, they ensure you're healthy and you also stay even if you charge more. Your client will stay with you because of the experience, because of the quality of relationship. 
Now, I will say, I don't feel like I'm always the best at community. And it's one of those things that I want to get better with in, in my world. But what I know is it's one of those drivers. It's one of those drivers. And, oh, I could go into that. And I go back to the power of habit. Oh, there's some good stuff in that book. You need to read it. Um, but that's what we're looking at. Sorry, just looking at my notes over here. Here's the thing. When you have an economic downturn, it is the time that you can make money. I think some of the biggest jumps, some of the biggest growth in business happens in economic downtime. And the reason why is because things get cheaper, things um, you might be able to buy out a competition that you wouldn't have had a hope to buy out. Maybe you find a new partner that is willing because they need additional income now where they wouldn't have been willing a year ago. And this all goes back, oh, I'm going to tell you, it goes back to that financial blanket or cushion of three to six months. If you have that cushion, <laughs> suddenly you can take advantage of opportunities, all right? When there's a downturn, and this happened the last stock market, and um, Ed and I were, we were, we had different financial goals, and we looked at the situation that was happening where stocks were tanking, or like, oh, you know, oh man, now's the time to buy, All right? If you look at, I think it's even um, Tony Robbins' latest book about money, he talks about this too, about wealth is made in the downtime. It's sustained in the uptime, but it's actually made. And I even real estate, I know my real estate agent once said, he's like, you don't make money selling a house. You make money buying a house. When you buy it, you want to buy right. That's when you make money. Okay, it's the same way in your business. If you've got that financial cushion of three to six months, then you're able to take advantage of opportunities. Now, by the same token, don't be as maybe risk prone if that's who you are. I'm a high risk taker. My husband's not. Makes kind of a good balance most of the time. Um, but when you want to look at avoiding long shots, you know, if you look at things and you can sustain the loss, because you've got this cushion over here. Maybe you lose a month of, in, of savings in there and you can sustain the loss. Go for it. But if it wipes you out, is that a smart decision? I mean, this is just good, I guess, financial planning. I'm not a financial planner. I'm just speaking from um, a lot of roads of hard knocks and um, hills and valleys and some pits, <laughs> pits of despair at some times. But you also want to avoid negative cash flow situations. Now, negative cash flow situation sounds like a really big word. Basically, this can happen to you when you grow. This is what, what people do when they grow themselves out of business is they get into a negative cash flow situation. It's one of my passions, especially with small businesses, is to shift things, to shift it to a positive cash situation to where you're getting money and then you deliver, not delivering and then waiting for money. I hate chasing money. Chasing money is, is bleh. Nobody should be doing it, okay? Especially um, if we've got to pay for cars and houses before we get receive goods, then people can pay for our services before they received those things. But sometimes when you get into this investment mindset or you want to take advantage of this opportunity, you're actually putting yourself into a negative cash flow. That's not good. You know, if it's a small segment of your business, maybe you can sustain that. Maybe you can um, go without being paid. I don't know your situation. But my my goal here is to avoid, help you go, ooh, negative cash flow situation. I need to review this. I don't necessarily need to be an automatic yes, even if the gain seems to be so attractive. So um, you want to protect those investments, but you do want to keep investing. And even, you know, whenever I, ha I get these show ideas and I, I plan out what I'm going to do, I then like go out and fact check. I try to make sure I'm not really off base or talking out of turn with what I'm sharing. But, you know, there was a Forbes article that talked about how to recession proof your business from um, 2007. It was funny. It was written before the really the recession hit hugely, 2007. And the biggest things they did, said was, don't stop hiring and don't stop marketing as your two biggest investments. Remember that opportunity I was talking about <laughs> of having some cash and suddenly that key talent that could help you grow your business is let go because their company doesn't have money? That's an investment that would pay off. All right. Marketing is an investment because guess what? People are going quieter 
trying to save money. You don't make money by saving money, okay? They get quieter and you have an opportunity to become a market leader. But if you shelter in, if you pull back, you're going to see that shrinkage of business. And that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to maximize. We're trying to protect in the good times and then trying to maximize the downturn and use the opportunities as we can. So I, I know I'm chatting like crazy. I don't have too many questions and I have so much to say. I, I'm, I'm a little passionate about this. Can't help it. Sorry. And that's why we're sharing. Um, I got to go back into this. I, this is my last topic and then we'll see if we have any, any questions. So if you've got some questions, now's the time to put them into the chat or into uh, the Facebook Live uh, comments down here and let me know what those things are. Um, but we're we're talking about recession proofing and I kind of want to bring come back into this and I tapped into it a little bit, but I want to give you a little bit more of, I guess, the geekiness behind it. I'm sorry, I'm a business geek. I can't help it. And I read books like this because they are fascinating to me. But I, I mentioned the power of habit. And I was interested in this because a lot of what I do for coaching is helping people shift their habits. And I find that I have been really good at shifting people's habits. And I have not been so good at shifting people's habits. So I was curious. I was like, how can I be better? I mean, people are, are employing me to help them improve their businesses and in their lives. How can I help them be better? So I was reading this book. And it, oh, interesting. If you're a coach, you want to read this book. But there were two things that it talked about. And it really came back to me as far as why you need to um, be strengthening relationships and strengthening community and really getting that culture um, in your clientele and in your employees. And part of that is, is that habits are really hard to break. They're really hard to break. Anybody ever tried to stop smoking? Stop chewing your nails? You know, stop having that four o'clock cap you know, caffeine break or, or even, um, you know, the, the candy bar break, you know, that habits are hard to break. And they talked about a couple of things in here. And this example actually had to do with Rosa Park, which would made it 10 times more fascinating. But there's two things without going into this about strong ties and weak ties. And strong ties are those people that you have, have relationships with. Weak ties is peer pressure. All right, easiest way to kind of put this. Well, strengthening your relationships, be it with partners. We were talking, Samir asked us earlier about partners. Um, we were talking about having those types of, of relationships in your business. But strengthening your relationships with your employees, with your clients, and with your partners in good times means that the habit of doing work with you, of, you know, being in your circle, of thinking of you when an opportunity arises, stays put, okay? This is one of those really subtle, I mean, if adapt adaptability was a nuance of a skill, I think this is like really a nuance, um, uh, under a nuance. But you want to be able to make sure that you've got the community, that you've got your relationships, that you have put value into them so that they can sustain. And so that you're not trying to, if you think of this uh, this way, I don't know how I could put it. Um, when times get bad, doors get knocked on a lot. More so than when times are good because people are too busy to go knocking on doors. You have to bolster your relationships with your clients and your in your community to sustain the extra knocking that's going to occur. We want to keep the habit with ourselves. Now, as always, I am all about ethical business. So if you're not ethical, don't take that to heart. But if you are honest and ethical and you're providing a good service, I'm, I'm trying to give you the skills to become that better business person so that at the end of the day, your business is business proof. So that's it. I'm done. My voice is scratchy. I think um, we're doing pretty well. I don't see too many questions. If you've got a question, please put them in the chat box um, and we'll kind of go on from there. I'm going to go ahead and sign off on Facebook Live. So thanks to everybody that joined us. We had quite a few viewers over there. Um, and then we'll, we'll hang out here on Blab just a few minutes more as we get going. So thanks, guys, on Facebook Live. Love you. And there they go. Um, but if you're on Blab and you've got any questions about recession proofing or if you want to come on and 
talk a little bit about recession proofing um, and what's worked for you, what, you, what you've seen. I would love to have you on. What I'll let you know is that we will not have a show next week. I have a family day. We're going to be at the water park. So don't feel like I can do a water park show effectively. So we'll be missing you on that one. We'll be back, though, on August 1st uh, for Motherhood and Business, Three Blissful Ways to Make It Work with our guest, uh, Mary Lucy of Empowered Mom. Howdy, Amy. Want to do a Hi. couple shout-outs while I take a water break? Sure, absolutely. So, again, I want to thank Stephen for being here. We also have Dr. Corey here and um, Mem... Uh, no, I'm not going to say it right. I'm sorry. Memzi245 <laughs> is here. And um, and um, I'm sorry. It's M2500 is here. And, and so I apologize. I cannot read. I think it's Cyrillic and I don't read Cyrillic. So uh, we're thrilled that you're here, though. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to put in there like how I would actually say it, that would be wonderful. Uh, so thank you all for being here. And uh, I uh, put in the chat that if you have a question for Leslie, to please go ahead and post it. And if you are not live but are just watching um, and you have a question, please jump over live into the chat and post your question for Leslie. So, I mean, we've had a pretty packed full show, and I've been very passionate I know Amy's been sitting over there occasionally. I can see her eyes. She's like, holy cow, you're really on fire today. And your um, expressions are so awesome. <laughs> You've been very full of lots of quirky and fun expressions today. <laughs> well, I know I've been a little a little funny, but I don't know. This I'm just I'm just feeling it's the time for people to pay attention to what's going on and be smart business because I I don't like complainers. Oh, I have children and when they complain, I just look at them and I'm like, I, I'm moving on. <laughs> um, so, you know, now's the time, like I said early on, when times are good or you don't feel like, you know, anything could happen to shift your business, it's really the best time to prepare. Um, you can't buy in, in, you can't buy insurance for this, um, but you can. So I'm going to let uh, Dr. Corey is asking if he can come good. on. So Dr. Corey, I'm going to go ahead and have you on. Thanks for joining us back on the show. I know you've been here a couple of times, so yep. let me let him on. Uh, Dreams Come True University. So Dr. Corey, how are you doing? Hey, hey. you're out and about. Yes, I'm uh, mobile. <laughs> well, welcome. You? I'm doing well. What do you think of the show today? Um, first of all, you, you're, um, I mean, uh, you're beautiful and smart. So, and uh, of course, you got the emotional intelligence running. You know, uh, so I think uh, you're hitting all the nails. Good. Yeah. So you've been in business for a while. How long have you, um, tell us about Dream, go ahead and do a little shout out for yourself real quick and then I've got a couple questions. Yeah, I have a coaching and consulting business uh, going on and uh, with my wife we do um, coaching, consulting, network marketing, marketing, networking. Um, and I do research and entertainment based on the method I created, which is called uh, Dreams Come True Circle. And uh, it takes, it has its own research department. It has, wow. it has, it has its own, um, basically, uh, coaching uh, uh, parts of it. And physically, um, for people who are interested, I have a in-person circle that uh, happens in basically their people's home if uh, they're interested, or their office, or in their corporate level place. Awesome. Well, tell me, how long have you been in business? Well, I've been basically part-time over 10 years. Over 10 years. So you've seen good times and bad times. Absolutely, yes. And what I've you, had various jobs as well in the past. So, What know, do you think and, is, is key yeah. to being able to survive a downturn in your business? Well, you know, for uh, people who are 
well connected with the leaders, they never have a downtime. In other words, mm -hmm. whether uh, you know market is up or down, it doesn't mm -hmm. make a difference to them because it's strictly a transaction, you mm -hmm. know. So the thing is that uh, the feeling is not there. They don't dep get depressed. Uh, I mean, they may get stressed, but they don't get depressed and they don't get too high uh, on the market. So what I like to say is that working with the leaders, the only thing that you can expect is that they're highly loving people, but you have to connect with the ones that connect with you. Mm hmm so those leaders who care about you and you care about them mutually going to be doing business with you, whether market is up, market is down. You're always going to have a uh, business job investment going on with them, you know. And it comes back to that relationship that we were talking about is, is really yeah, yeah. where you have key, good, honest Mutually beneficial relationships. Yeah, yeah, but it's a family relationship. It's not a business relationship because business relationship is when you go get a job, <laughs> or maybe, or maybe you do, you get their signature to do their plumbing. Yeah, for example, you yeah. know. But, but uh, family is when you become uh, family with these people and they do business with you. They eat with you at their barbecue. Uh, or your barbecue, whichever comes first, or, you know, going on. You know, you're talking business, you're playing, you're eating, you're investing, you're buying, a, let's say, real estate together if you have to. You know, the ideas are family ideas, you know. So yeah. this is not, it's got nothing with, oh, I have to protect myself if I, uh, invest with Joe. No, Joe is watching your back, you know? Yeah. It's about having those really key relationships. I know even in uh, here in Dallas, I've worked hard on getting just good relationships with people that are out there doing what I'm trying to do. And when you have those relationships, you actually get that family, um, kind of family yeah. atmosphere out there that uh, people looking out for you. Because um, being yeah, an entrepreneur yeah. can be lonely if you let it. It doesn't have to be, but it no, can be lonely it's, it's, if you like No, it. no, no. Entrepreneur is like you're a plumber or you're a, a carpenter or you're a salesperson and this and that. And you're all alone because you got to make it like a superman, superwoman. <laughs> I'm you over know. that. I got over that a long time ago. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So, you know, uh, when you have a team that you work with, invest with, share ideas with, these people are, could be, you know, not even your blood family, they, 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 but they are like your, like uh, Navy SEALs family. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yep. So you always, you always, as an entrepreneur in, in family, you always, I mean, I, I'm not talking about blood family business. I'm talking about who you trust. Like, mm -hmm. like I wouldn't, I wouldn't really do business. I wouldn't do business with my brother. I tried that, but... <laughs> I, uh, I closed the business because he wanted to run us into bankruptcy and eventually he went on his own and he did it on his own. Well, but, I, think, you know, I thank you for joining us here today. I'm going to see if there's any more questions, um, but I loved having you on and taking us on your walk with you. Yeah, I, I would like to be on. I just wanted to say that, you know, my brother, for example, I'm just using an example not to, you know, kind of like get you to cry with me it's it's just uh what i'm trying to say is that my brother for example and i'm t telling you is open knowledge i mean it's not like i'm giving you any secrecy the si situation is that if for example my blood family my brother for example if he was watching my back he wouldn't want it to take such an extreme risk you know what i'm saying well, yeah, there's there's a lot of difference um, between family, within family and without family. But I do love your share here of, of really having those people that have your back as being um, the people that will ride ride the wave with you. Well, you know, you know who's my first, you know, who's my true family partner is that I trust 100 percent. Who? My wife. I was going to say I was going to hope you were going to say that. And if and if you don't trust your spouse get 
you know, get out of there if you can. I don't know. Whatever you have to do. Yeah, you I have hear you. To, you have to have a 100% trusting, loving relationship with your spouse immediately. Yeah. First. Well, thank you so much for being on, Dr. Corey, and sharing. And, and, and I give all of you face I, there. I, I give all of you uh, a free valuation coaching if you would like to contact me later on. Yeah, just check out uh, Dr. Corey's profile. So he's got it there. So we'll say adieu. Uh, thank adios. You. And all right, see have you. a beautiful rest of your day. All right. Thank you. Pleasure talking with you. Bye-bye. As well. Well, thanks, guys. We have been um, chatting for the last hour or so on recession proofing your business, and we've covered a lot of ground. Um, I loved what Dr. Corey had to share here is just about the value of those relationships. And I think that's kind of what we ended on is really making sure that you've got strong relationships and good time because a lot of those relationships will be what drive what bring you forward. Um, we'll do one last shout out. We're kind of going over our normal hour, but I know we've got some new people that have kind of popped on. If you've got a question about recession proofing your business and we'll, we'll take those, but I'll, I'll say just uh, raise your hand in the chat box so that I know that's what you'd like to do. And then we'll kind of move on. Um, like I mentioned, we'll be back. Uh, normally, we're here every uh, Monday with, with the summertime and holidays. And we've been a little less um, predictable in that. So we're off next week. We'll be back on the 1st. And then um, we'll actually be off again on the 8th. And then we should be good for the rest of the year, except for Labor Day. Yeah, Thanksgiving. <laughs> So, um, thanks so much, guys. I don't see any new hands being raised. Uh, if you missed some of this, be sure to catch the replay here. On You can grab it at yourbizrules.com. Um, and as always, if you'd like to be able to find more than just one way to double your business, be sure to grab our Marketing Quick Fix free gift at yourbizrules.com forward slash Marketing Quick Fix. Thanks so much and have a beautiful week.